Well, as you'll notice, I am alone this week. Kyle stayed back in Europe. I, I think he's going to a discotheque in Brussels or something. But uh, while he enjoys a few days off, I was here for Caldwell's press conference. It's going to be the only media availability of the week. And, and one of the big questions that we had, obviously, was the, the third and nine run with 24 seconds left in the game. It's a, a critical moment. A lot of people have criticized it. And, and we asked Caldwell to explain what he was thinking in that situation. Um, his response was he didn't feel it was a high-risk play. He said the team practices every day. It's true. It's called uh, a bonsai kick. It's where there's no timeouts, the clock is running, and the units switch on both sides of the field. Have seen them practice that every single day. They've practiced field goals during training camp, during the regular season. When we're out there, I have seen it. Um, but I, I can't agree with with. Caldwell's logic of why they did it. You know, his argument was they, they didn't want to leave any time on the clock. They didn't want Devin Hester to have a shot to return the kick. They didn't want to have Matt Ryan have a chance to throw some deep passes down the field and get that field goal back. But it was the way the Lions did it to get to that point to run down the clock that I, I really have a problem with. You know, they, they were settling for a 48-yard field goal, and this was a team that had not made a 40 to 49-yard field goal all season long. The field was a mess, and and I get it. Matt Prater has a great track record, but you don't rely on a 40-yard field goal on a bad field in that situation. I think you have 34 seconds left. This is before the second bell run on 39. They ran it twice, if you remember, uh, to, to move the chains, to pick up some extra yardage, to, to make that kick a little bit more manageable. And we saw when he attempted a 43-yarder with the clock stopped, he, he missed it. You know, it was that second chance that, that he, you know, Prater was able to finally knock it down. So... It, it wasn't wise relying on, on Prater to make a field goal from that range in those conditions. Um, you know, I, I don't agree with the justification. I think the line should have been a little bit more aggressive there. End of the day, a win is a win. That's how Caldwell sees it. That's how I see it. But you can't ignore that the conservative play calling wasn't the right decision, and it's something that needs to be improved going forward. You know, Caldwell used a, a, a pretty interesting example from his time at Wake Forest. He, you know, his his team was was playing Maryland back in '93. They had a chance to to kick a chip shot field goal, take a two score lead, but their field goal kicker had been awful in that game. I think he'd missed three in a row, and I, I, Lions fans can sympathize with that, obviously. But instead of kicking the chip shot, they decided to go for it on fourth and one at the one yard line. Uh, got stuffed, and Maryland took the ball 99 yards. And stole the game from him, you know. And and, and Caldwell reflected back on that and his decision making. He didn't want to give the Falcons a shot. Um, I respect that. You, if you can take all the time off the clock, you do it. But I think they could have done it in a different way, where they didn't put a, a strain on a kicker that you know maybe doesn't have all his confidence. As as I mentioned multiple times already, the the field wasn't in great con, you know shape. Uh, you could have put him in a better position to succeed, succeed instead of settling for a, for a long 48-yarder. In this case, the Lions got away with it thanks to a penalty with the Falcons and, and a second attempt, but um, they're going to need to be better. They're going to need to be better in late-game situations going forward because there's, there's obviously going to be a lot of them. That's just how the NFL is, a lot of one-score games, and, and you have to uh, you know, make sure you call the right plays in the end to finish consistently. The Lions have done that so far in the first half. They're second, sitting at 6-2, and two, but you know they need to win at least four more games down the stretch, maybe five, and you know to, to, to be in the, the conversation for the division title. Uh, that's all I got. Uh, Kyle will be back next week. We'll be back next week with uh, more daily videos, but keep it tuned to MLive for more content from today's press conference and uh, some, some wrap-up from other mid-season stuff.